Hola, hola, hola. Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl here, Daniela, la planning a diva. And I am running late, super late, to my 9 a.m. appointment. It is 9.02 and I am just getting in the car. I decided to bring you along with me today because I am going to the San Diego Honeybee Sanctuary to conduct some field tests and collect some honeybees for genetic analysis. We're there by the invitation of the San Diego Bee Sanctuary, which is led by Paul Gunn and Dominic Peck. And I'm going with a bunch of UC Riverside honeybee researchers to conduct these field assays. And it's going to be exhausting but really fun and exciting. And I thought it would be really cool to bring you along and share with you some of the field work that I do. So enough chit chat, I gotta get to the bee sanctuary. So let's go. Okay, we have arrived at the San Diego Bee Sanctuary. Bees, hives over there, research team up here assembled. I'm gonna put my hood on because these bees like to sting my hair. So gotta put my hood on. We're here at the San Diego Bee Sanctuary. Check out all these beautiful blue hives. Just sitting out here in Escondido. We're at the very edge of the city here. There's about 50 box ties captured from swarms, relocated from houses and other urban areas. And so far I haven't gotten stung yet. So I'm hoping that I don't get stung at all. Okay, currently we're conducting a survey of the apiary. We're just numbering all the hives with just like an organized numbering scheme just so that we can identify all the hives. Um, Dominique Peck is helping us out with this. Um, this is such an amazing apiary. It's beautifully situated. It's so gorgeous out. You can see all the rolling hills of Escondido Valley. And uh, we're enjoying the calm before the storm that is opening up these honeybee hives. It's going to be intense and hope, hoping I won't get stuck. Also, Paul has uh, got some of his homies, some videographers to uh, to, to video us um, working out in the hives. But this is Paul Gunn, um, head of San Diego Bee Sanctuary. Hey, Paul. Hey. How's it going? Good, how are you? Great, I'm doing, I'm, I'm hoping I don't get stung too much today. <laughs> um, but Paul, can you tell us a little bit, why are you so passionate about honeybees? I love the bees. Um, <laughs> why am I passionate? I don't know, because they're important. Absolutely. Right? We need them. Um, uh -huh. I love honey. <laughs> we all do, absolutely. And uh, I don't know, something about beekeeping as well. It uh -huh. takes away all the other distractions and mm. I just focus on the bees and it's really peaceful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's beautiful out here too. Oh, so. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's beekeeping is very therapeutic. Absolutely. All right, thanks, Paul. Yeah. Okay, so the team is starting to sample one hive here. We're going to be sampling every single hive. We're going to be sampling three individual honeybee workers and two honeybee drones. Those are the males. This is going to be for a later genetic analysis. And so um, we're doing one hive as an example for everyone. And then we're going to split up into a teams of um, three and four. And then we're going to sample every single hive in this apiary, which is going to be a lot. Sakshi and Mark are checking out this hive over here. Like a three? Hive number 32. We'll get there, we'll get there yeah. Okay, I need you for Barua count. Okay. Yeah. They're checking Barua. I mean, the frames are broken, but yeah. we're still gonna make sure colony. that we don't catch queen. Hot colony. They're really mobbing here, we all. So intense. Let me get back to my team over here. Okay. I'm here with Nessus Chong, PhD candidate at the University of California, Riverside. Hi, Genesis. Hello. Oh my gosh, you are such a boss going into this hive. You're not scared at all? You're not scared at all no. to be in this hive? Really? They always make me a little bit nervous. They make me nervous when they go inside my veil. Yeah. Yeah, that is the worst. Oh my gosh. Uh, Paul and Dom told us this was going to be a spicy hive, but it doesn't seem like it. 
Why is not the weather today is in bad? Yeah. Or what do you think? Mm. Because it doesn't feel like cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Ooh, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, I need to actually put this down. Take yep. that sample with us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dom is shaking the the bees oh. now. We're taking Committing a bee murder. Here Genocide, genocide at this point. It is Dom, be genocide. It's like a hundred in there you got. But we're I'm gonna... like, I guess misogynistic because like they're mainly summer. So oh my goodness. It's not good. Oh my goodness. Can you blur oh. my face from this video? <laughs> <laughs> it's just all pixelated. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're so we're, right now we're d conducting sugar shakes. Genesis is leading us in the sugar shake test. Yeah, this is to count for varroa mites yeah. on the honeybees. Um, varroa mites are not a good thing for honeybees. You really want to be minimizing your varroa mites. And so we're just testing to get a sense of which hives are the most resistant to varroa and which ones are the least resistant. And um, in order to identify like underlying genetics that might be contributing to, to, those, um, to that resistance. Alright, and now I'm going to um, test their defensiveness with this black flag. I'm just going to do this for 15 seconds and then count the number of stings on the flag. And this will give us an idea of how defensive this hive is. Alright, and then I'm going to walk off um, to 50 meters and get a test of how much they pursue me. Get a sense of how intense they are with their pursuit. So Sakshi's over there walking. Still, she's also doing another passing. And this uh, tape measure that we've laid out on the ground is marking out 25 meters here, and then 50 meters over there where Sakshi is. And at each 25 meter and 50 meter mark, we're going to estimate how intense is the pursuit on a subjective scale of one to five, with five being the most intense pursuit. I would say it's about a, a three and a uh, and a, uh, yeah. I would say I, I would say this is a three level pursuit. Okay, now I reached the 50 meter mark and um, so she's already walking back up. Okay, Woo, this is has been an intense day. Um, you can see my steampunk goggles on my head. These actually help me not only as sunglasses, but also protecting my eye sockets. Because sometimes bees, they will get into my veil through a random hole that I didn't catch, and then they'll sting me. I remember um, a few years back, I had a bee get into my suit, and it crawled up my nose. And there's nothing like having a honeybee crawling in your nostril, let me tell you. I've definitely gotten stung in the face quite a bit. Bees will find a way through your suit if you let them. So I definitely am strapped down right now. So now I have this little black patch. I'm gonna count the stings here. There were three stings on this patch. Not too hot of a hive, I would say. I've seen hives give me like 50 stings on this thing. All right, let's get back to work. Yeah, they, are, they are going for it right now. Now this is a nice hot hive. So bit. this I'm pretty sure is from that one. Dude, there's Varroa's right here, look. Right here. So this is a good one. Yeah, yeah. You can see, yeah, yeah, see yeah, I'm in the, on the drawing. Oh, sorry. I'm totally like... Oh, putting, yeah. See, there's smoke pretty... in people's eyes. I'm used to it. Sorry, sorry. It's my good day. So are you going to do... Do you want to do one from the brood? The test? Yeah. Because what do you see in that? Not a... yeah, there were two. But I think the brood will be more accurate. Yeah. So we're doing that fresh alcohol. Yep, alcohol. I got fresh alcohol in here. Nice. And then I will wait, Let's get it open. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you got a stun sting. Yeah. I move. I move a little fast, so. Charge smoking the bees right now. Many on here. You can try and stop rushing. Stop oh. rushing. Go to town. Go to town, Mark. And then I'll give you a few different ones. Don, give them that. It's because all the bees are on us and not in the box. Mm -hmm. uh, 
good. Take that side. So we're collecting bees for the Varroa checks. And I am in charge with the smoker right now. Those two together. You good? You got enough? Okay. Then we need to get workers from here still. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I have the labels here. Oh, yeah, yes. So, I, I mean, here's the thing is that there's so many little holes, and that's why I'm saying I feel like these guys are going to have a lot of Barola. mites, but maybe not. Yeah, maybe. I bet. Yeah. Does anyone have tubes? Tubes, tubes? <laughs> I will look for tubes. Here, I'll leave my smoker in case anyone, in case anyone wants to smoke here, I'll leave Okay. Okay, we finished up, we wrapped up, we finally finished up all of our um, tests with the honeybees and ah, I did not get stung once. So thank the Lord, thank God, thank Jesus Christ, thank every single deity in the Pantheon because I thought I was going to be hurting by this time of the day. Ah, it's actually not too late, it's only 2 p.m. I thought we were gonna be here till 5 p.m. So I'm very happy about that. And yeah, the San Diego Bee Sanctuary was amazing. Uh, Paul Gunn and Dominique Peck were fantastic hosts. Super, super cool. Helped us with all of the tests. Were very hands-on, helped us out. The entire team was amazing. Everyone at Cyber, that's UCR's Center for Integrative Bee Research and the San Diego Bee Sanctuary were fantastic. Amazing team. Super, super proud of them. Super proud of what we accomplished. And now I'm gonna go home and take off my bee suit and drink a lot of water and eat some snacks. Let's get home. Okay, I'm back at home. I just parked. There's an annoying dog. My neighbor has this really annoying dog that's always barking, so I'm sorry about that. I meant to show you my outfit, my bee suit outfit, but I totally started um, I totally started taking off my clothes. Once you're in a bee suit, you just want to get out of the bee suit, especially if you've been in it for a couple of hours. And so I just stripped it off. I wanted it off me. But before I take it all off, so underneath my bee suit, I just wear workout clothes. I'm just wearing a long sleeve workout shirt and I'm wearing a sports bra underneath that. Definitely want a nice tight sports bra. My shirt needs to be long sleeve because I want all the protection I can get from bee stings. In terms of pants, over my bee suit, I wear my military grade camo pants. I love these things. These are perfect for beekeeping. They're my perfect size. I love them so much. They have roomy pockets. I store my hive tools in there, all kinds of things. And they just protect my butt and my legs from stings because my bee suit is a little tight on my butt and I have definitely gotten stings on my butt through my bee suit. So I like so I like having the military camo pants over my bee suit. And then for boots, I actually wanted to show you this. So my boots my boots are rain boots. They're super cute with the little dogs on them, but I actually tape over my boots because bees will get into your boots and so I have just my boots taped so that no bees get in and I have to take this off every time I take off my bee suit. I already took one boot off. I already took this boot off and as you can see I still have tape on there. And then this is actually my bee suit here. It's a very standard bee suit. And it's actually like a child size bee suit because I am tiny, I'm barely five foot. It's actually a little bit tighter than what I want it to be. This is actually a little bit too tight for me, but I'd rather have a tight bee suit than a super baggy one, especially since I use um, the camo pants over my bee suit and that protects against stings. And then to keep my hair back, I actually just use this cute little do-rag. I don't even know where I got it from, but it, it is key. It is essential. My hair gets all over the place. I have really long, frizzy, curly hair. And so if I do not hold it back, then it's going to get in my way. 
having a braid right here and actually this is something funny um everyone thought this was funny i sometimes wear my steampunk goggles when i go into hives so i'll be wearing these underneath my veil and these are just from like party city they're steampunk goggles and actually i use these kind of as a combination of sunglasses sometimes it's really sunny out there it's nice to have sunglasses on and i used to wear sunglasses when i was beekeeping on a sunny day but the goggles actually also help protect against bees stinging really close to your eyes or stinging your actual eyeball which can happen and is horrible it's never happened to me but i've heard that you have to go to a hospital to get the sting removed i kid you not there was a time in my life where i was in hives quite a bit and they were not the nicest hives they were a bit spicy and i was actually wearing full-on like snorkeling gear on my face to protect from bees getting in and stinging inside my nostril or around my eyes although honestly if you have a good bee suit it's not gonna let bees into your suit it's only on those rare occasions that bees find a hole either they found a way to sneak in through like where the zippers close the hood or you have a, a small tear in your veil they'll find a way in and if you don't realize that there's a, an opening they'll get into your suit and then all hell breaks loose so you shouldn't need to have protective gear underneath your veil your veil should keep them out but it's just when the, these get into your veil it's the absolute worst so i do feel a little bit more reassured when i have a little bit of layered protection underneath my veil and these um steam, steampunk goggles do the job i don't use my uh snorkeling goggles anymore because actually those were a little bit too annoying to use i didn't feel like the payoff was worth it like the snorkeling goggles were too intense to use they were just really tight and they got really hot in them and honestly half the time i just didn't need them no bees are gonna get into my suit so we're home and I'm gonna get inside and get some lunch. I'm just here with bugs now, just hanging out, just taking a minute to decompress. I always feel absolutely wired when I'm working with honey beehives and it takes a, it takes a little bit to kind of decompress, de-stress. I'm so happy and blessed that I did not get stung. I'm just here with my baby bugs. Daisy's over there in the corner, messing around. But I think this is it for the blog. Not much else going on today. I think I might try to do some work. I might film a video. I might film another plan with me. We'll see. I might try to do some stretching. I might do some meal prep. We'll see. We'll see. But honestly, nothing too exciting. So I think I'll just um, finish up the vlog. I hope you enjoyed that whirlwind tour through the San Diego Bee Sanctuary with the team. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun in retrospect. No, no, no. It was fun while we were there as well. But it's always so intense. Oh, there's Daisy. Hey, baby. Daisy, give me kisses. Give me kisses. I love when dogs lick you. Mm, so cute. Give me a kiss. Yeah, good girl. Anyways, I'm just gonna hang out with my pugs for the rest of the day. Maybe do some work, some chores, and then maybe maybe film a video or two. We'll see. But I'm so happy I did not get stung today. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you in my next video. So until then, stay safe, stay blessed, and happy planning and happy trails. Bye.